Welcome back to Airborne Productions and welcome to part two of the 24 ton hydraulic press build. Now last time you saw how it worked, you probably got confused. That's okay, I've been confused this whole time. But we got a press, so it worked out. This time you're gonna see how we started to put it together. We began by fabricating the frame. So in this process, you're gonna see some cutting on a bandsaw, a bunch of different welds, really the same old stuff. And trust me, no matter how boring it is, it's really important. This really sets the foundation of whether or not your press is gonna work right or if it's gonna suck. Don't suck. Okay, there's our basic layout right there. We have our pieces set. The I-beam on the outside is going to get welded first along with those two cross member I-beam pieces. This is what is gonna hold the bottom of the ram. This is where the top of the ram will hook to. These plates are gonna grab onto these, push this plate up into this stationary plate. Obviously it'll all be centered. Right now it's flat on the ground. So we're gonna take all this crap out, get rid of all that plate, everything except our four pieces of I-beam here, here, and these two. Then we're gonna carefully weld it, hopping from corner to corner after tacking it, just to keep it from distorting. The last thing we want is for it to get out of square and twisted. Now the most important thing to keep in mind when welding your H-beam frame is to keep this gap constant. We went with a 12 inch gap, which means that right here, right here pretty much everywhere on these sliding surfaces that the carriage touches it needs to be right at 12 inches if these h beams aren't parallel you're going to get all sorts of binding issues and whatnot to fix that we welded from corner to corner to try to evenly spread the heat but the most important thing is make sure those things are parallel So we finished welding most of the frame, but we still need a 5 8 plate on here and then our die plate. Down here we welded this inch vertical plate, so this will get a hole in it, which is where the clevis and pin is going to go for the ram. Get our ram here, our trolley will go here, which is the plate that moves from the ram, squishes up against there. So yeah, next step, like I said, 5 8 plate here, and then get that trolley together. So right now we're gonna drill our holes in our side plates for our trolley. We have a bunch of holes to drill. We're starting with a small bit. Then we're gonna run up to a 5 8 hole because we'll be running 5 8 bolts through the side of these. Okay, we're done with most of the drilling for our trolley setup. We got these plates all drilled out and bolted up. The only thing you need is spacers in here, but that should be pretty simple. Um, but yeah, this is our side plates for our trolley. Basically, when the ram is down here, the trolley will sit here. The top of the ram will connect to a vertical piece of steel connecting these two plates. And as the ram extends, these plates extend. And on top we'll have a 5 8 piece flat, and then we'll have our die plates that slide in and out to be replaceable on top and bottom here. And whenever that ram extends, there you go. So now we're gonna mill a slot in this thing, this thing as well. In order to grease it, we're gonna put a Zerk fitting in it to keep grease in it so that metal to metal contact doesn't wear itself out. Then we're gonna take this one inch plate, put a big ass hole in it for our big ass clevis pin. To 
make the carriage, we took one inch thick steel vertically and one inch thick steel horizontally. We stacked those on top of each other centered and sandwiched them between these two inside side plates. On top of that, when our die plate holder and all of that got welded underneath. Every single seam where these met got solidly welded. Once that's together, you might have to do some grinding on the outside of your inner side plates just to get the thing to sandwich between here. It depends on how close it is. That's one thing that we had to think a lot about actually is the difference between the 12 inch dimension between the two H beams and the 12 inch dimension on the outside of these inner side plates so that the carriage fits in between nicely. Too tight and you get binding issues, especially if there's any sort of debris and too loose and all of a sudden you have this play, this movement. So there is a middle ground there where it's snug, but it's not so tight that it wants to bind up. Once that is figured out and fit up properly, these spacers and the outside side plates get bolted on these bolts and nuts, there it is. So one of the first things we noticed with how strong this press is, is that this piece was actually bending upwards. So you're gonna see us add a gusset right here to fill in this gap and to help transfer that load up into these diagonal braces. That will help a lot with deflection, ultimately make a stronger press. If you're interested in building this press yourself, we have plans available on Etsy that will include drawings for all the fabricated components It'll include a CAD model, a bill of materials, and very detailed instructions so that you can yourself build this thing at home. I mean, these presses go for four, five, six thousand dollars and upwards. And altogether, depending on what motor, what other components you buy, you're right around two thousand, conservatively twenty five hundred dollars to build this yourself. Which, for the capabilities that it gives you, that's really a bargain. Like I said, our plans and instructions, everything on how to build this exact press will be in the description, as well as links to all the products that you see here. Buying through those links or buying our plans on Etsy both help support this channel immensely and allow us to do cool projects like building a big ass press. So thanks for watching. This wraps up part two of this press build. Hopefully by now your frame is entirely fabricated, welded up, and you're about ready to start adding some components in it to make this damn thing squish. So stay tuned for the next one where we start to add things like the RAM, uh, the motor, all sorts of those components to make this operational. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.